Hello, everybody. Uh, here is my slideshow about maker-centered learning in any and every classroom. Uh, Bitly MCL EduFab is uh, the shortcut, which I put into chat if I was really nice, right? There we go. There's that. Here's my contact information. I'm on Twitter a whole bunch. Uh, my email, paul at paulshercliffe.org. I've been uh, in education for about 25 years, mostly teaching physics and math. Uh, started off real traditional, but then quickly shifted uh, to more projects and then even shifted towards Maker uh, before Maker was actually even something we talked about. Dale Doherty is one person said, and several other people said, yeah, we're all makers, we're all born makers. Um, it's how we understand the world around us. But for some reason, we stopped making, you know, we did, we did mud pies, we did sticks for swords, we did blanket forts built with blocks, uh, but we stop. And then we wonder why we don't understand the world, which... You know, that's that's that we know why we don't understand the world because we're, we're not making. So I'm wondering uh, if you take a uh, couple minutes to share what kind of maker are you? So I've got a little padlet here to share. You now, what kind of maker are you? If you're good with Bitly, I put the links of the Padlet in the chat. If you love Bitly's, it's bit.ly slash I am a maker. Um, me, I started woodworking five years ago. Before that, I, uh, I, I cook a little bit, but being you know just one person, it's kind of a pain to do real cooking. Um, I've always been into uh, coding and electronics and gadgets. Um, 3D printing, when it first came out, I started with that. Um, you know, building stuff for science labs was always something um, that I did. Um, you know, you know tell, tell, or tell the kids, you know, scientists don't run down to lab supplies or us and buy a lab setup they got they've got to build it they got to create it so you know it was always uh that kind of thing so graphic designer visual artist we are very visual people um that's why i hate seeing more too many words on slides i think when people give presentations and they put paragraphs on slides um we're very visual so i i think that's you know great skill um Those are the things. So just Sherry and Paulo and Abigail here. Let me look that close enough. It is just Sherry and Paulo and Abigail, isn't it? Oh, no, there we go. Think we got Tommy, Gina, Heath. What else, are, what else are people? What kind of making um, is you? Because that's what I like to say. When people say, how do I start with maker? I think you start with something that's close to you. What do you do? What do you like to make and bring that in? Uh, something around that, something near that. That's all, it's always easiest to start with what you know um, and what you're comfortable with. Coats, 3D models, cooking. Um, I, really, I really wish we got more cooking for kids. I've uh, visited a school a couple hours south of me that they um, put in a kitchen. They took out one of the, you know, replaced one of the classrooms basically with a, with a 
um, industrial kind of kitchen with all those stainless steel prep stations and a special a couple special ovens and that uh, and a dishwasher they were happy that they finally had a dishwasher in there um and every kid i think in sixth grade took a cooking class for a quarter um and all the kids loved it and it's like, yeah they do they like doing stuff like that coding robotics um yeah after school doesn't have enough coding and robotics um fixing things yeah we've gotten away from that and there's lots of things i don't fix um but there are things that i do you know fixing is important especially as prices are getting more uh, coding is going to be next for uh for somebody robotics 3d fixed stuff yeah there's all sorts of all sorts of ways to make and that's one of the, the good and the bad um of maker so we've always done making and maker center learning is not a new concept actually it is really just a mashup of dewey montessori vygotsky piaget and pepper all of their ideas uh, about how education should happen. Um, so it's not new pedagogy. Um, it's not uh, one more thing to add to your plate if you're a teacher. It's a way to learn, and I think it's the best way to learn. At its core is the designing and building, creating of an artifact. Um, we make stuff, we prototype, sometimes we make more than one prototype, and then um, there are conversations and discussions that you can have from it or around it. And that's where the key is. It's the artifact at the center and the conversations around it. And those conversations can be different, different for every learner. And they probably should be because every learner comes from a different perspective and a different uh, place in their knowledge. Um, so for teachers, I want to tell them, here's the thought on how to get started. What artifact can my students create, design and create, that will allow us to have the content conversations we want to have. And it doesn't really have to be exactly the thing that they're doing. I mean, if you're, you know, building cardboard cars, you could be talking about uh, Ford and his um, factory line, the assembly line, you'd be talking about the, the evolution of cities, because the car is going through streets, uh, you can be talking lots of things. But it's you know making something because it's all in the conversations. The learning and assessment is in the conversations. The ones you have with a student or two, the ones that they have together with each other that you're listening to because you're going around the room. Um, the conversations while they're designing, while they're building, as well as after where they're explaining what what they've designed and created and why it was important to what we were doing. The emphasis is process over product. You know, Making our artifacts important, but there are those times where we don't have enough time in class uh, for everyone to get finished, which is really hard and it's heartbreaking as a teacher because you want every kid to uh, be successful uh, with everything, but sometimes we just don't have enough time to do that. But because you had all these conversations along the way, the artifact didn't quite get finished, but you still had the learning going on. Maker-centered learning, making in and of itself just opens up both sides of the brain, activates multiple parts of the brain, um, and they work together. So that's that's what helps uh, anchor the learning because it's in various parts. And it's naturally transcurricular. It, it's got all sorts of the science and math and English and art and history all just you know kind of blended together. Everyone's a teacher, everyone's a learner. It's a great statement that people have said about uh, maker-centered learning. And it really is true. We were doing a, a project one time with Soma Q puzzles, which are those puzzles, which are uh, block pieces uh, from three to five pieces in a block, and they will form a cube. And kids were coloring them with, you know, just acrylic paint, uh, markers, crayons, whatever, you know, things they want to try. And one kid came to me and asked me, um, can I hydro dip mine? Now, I have no idea what a hydro dipping is. I'm a physicist. Um, but they explained it to me and I said, yeah, okay, sounds great. Go ahead and do it. So they just went and found what they needed. 
It was in the classroom because I have lots of junk in my classroom and everybody wonders why I have so much junk in my classroom. Um, I don't know what kids are going to need. So they hydro dipped and then they showed other kids because other kids got interested and other kids then took off from them. So you got this distributed teaching and learning. You don't have to be the expert in everything as an educator. Kids know stuff. Everyone knows something you don't know. Kids learn about themselves and they uh, help each other because they like helping each other. One time with a project, I had a student explain to me what they had done, what's the next step they needed to do, what they had to learn next, where they were going. And one kid nearby was listening and you know, overheard that and said, hey, I know how to do that next step. I already did it. So they offered to help. And when that's what we love. I love that thing. When the kid says, I know how to do that. I can help. And it was great, especially because it came from a student who usually had trouble getting things done. But now they could help someone else get things done. So it really empowered them. And those are the great words. It helps develop the agency and the empowerment. Those are things we want um, for our kids. It's naturally student-centered, uh, learner-centered. And it has lots of ways for voice and choice. Um, the conversations come from their perspective. Uh, what do they want to make? Because we don't necessarily know how they want to make it. If you weren't just making cars, they got choices in how to design their car for making boats. They got choices in how to you know, make their boat. I'm not going to give them a cookie cutter recipe on how to make it. Uh, what materials they want to use, the bling they want to get to it. Uh, there are many paths to the learning goal, and that's what's great about maker-centered learning. It also allows them to put a piece of their self into it, that individualization, personalization, that's really important in learning um, to make it stick. They get their own on-ramp to learning. Uh, if you do lecture, if you do just worksheets, there's one viewpoint and that's the teacher's viewpoint. You do maker, um, every kid can kind of come at it from their own way. Like when we wanted to study Newton's laws and we did mousetrap cars, the person who was gonna be an artist started differently than the person who's gonna be an engineer because they could come at it from their, what they looked at, how they saw things. Um, the conversation started differently, but the conversations all got in um, Newton because once they come at it from their point of view and both sides of the brain are open, conversations uh, just happen. And we learn about more than just the content we're dealing with. I loved when one time I had a, we're in geometry, we're studying all the shapes, the quadrilaterals, and I had kids design something, design a building that's got all the shapes in it and make it be something and tell me about it. And kids did all sorts of things, gamer palaces. Um, but the one that I really loved was it was an equestrian center. And I had no idea this girl was into uh, writing. And so she got to tell me about her, you know, the things that she loved. And she designed this massive equestrian center, uh, which was just, just awesome. And she showed me all the, you know, all the, the formulas and all the areas and volumes and all the geometry stuff that she had to, about. but I also got to see the other things. And the, even at the end, she's like, can I, can I design a logo for my, for my center? So, yeah, go ahead. That's symmetry. We can talk about symmetry too. Um, so it gave her, gave, gives them their own ramp on ramp to uh, what we want to learn. Um, one of the great advantages to making and also one of the great disadvantages to making is there are endless ways of making. There are just so many, there's painting, there's coding, there's robotics, there's pottery, there's sewing, there's uh, drawing, drafting, uh, poster, woodworking, songs, plays, poster making, there's just so many ways. Um, so that's hard from the teacher point of view, but you don't have to be an expert in everything. And that's hard for teachers, but you don't have to be an expert in everything. Um, but because there's so many ways, every kid should be able to find something that speaks to them. They should be able to find um, something of interest to them. Now, making can also be digital or analog. It can be low cost and can be expensive. It can be low tech or high tech, but every kid should probably be able to find a way that's good for them. Everyone talks about this, the C's in education, but I think they miss the first C. 
I think curiosity is the first C we have to talk about. They want to talk about creativity, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and community. I throw that one out there too. But they skip curiosity, and curiosity is the one that drives all the other ones. Um, and maker-centered learning fosters all those. Now, creativity is important. It really is. And there are a lot of benefits from creativity and people talk about creativity a lot. And that's one of the top skills that's always mentioned and what needs to be, uh, what kids need to, to learn. And there are, there are these great, this great graphic um, from a Ken Robinson speech. Uh, I think Sylvia Duckworth made this graphic. Yeah, Sylvia made this graphic. You know, it allows you to express. It's multidisciplinary. It reduces stress and anxiety. You know, people talk about SEL, um, health, self-care. Making naturally uh, does that. Being a creative outlet. Um, you get a little, you can get into a fun zone. You get a sense of purpose when you're creative. And kids love doing that. They love making things to help others. And I think everyone does, actually. Um, so that's a great avenue to go there you get pride you get accomplishment you become a risk taker when you start being creative because you try stuff and you know okay it didn't work i'll try something else so create so that idea of the creativity and you know with the the health sel kind of thing making is just good for us making is just good for our spirit that that's like people's um when they're stressed they go and make something some sometimes and that it really helps them because it gets their brain into different uh, functions, gets different endorphins going. Um, Dan Ryder shared this chessboard that a student was just walking through the hall with Carrie and just had this massive smile. And the, the student couldn't stop saying, you know, my, look what I made. Look at my chessboard that I made. Look at this chessboard that I've got. And that's just, you know, that's what we want. We want them to be able to have that, that those moments. Maker is really a mindset. Um, and it's a, that I can kind of thing. You know, I can uh, take things apart and understand them. I can mash things up. I can make something that's workable. I can manipulate things. Um, I can make things that help me. I can make things for other people. Lots of uh, impact. You know, so it's this mindset that we're trying to, trying to create, a culture even. Um, curiosity, creativity, innovation, a mindset that, that, that does that. Um, and John Spencer made this graphic about what happens when kids develop, when people develop in general, a maker mindset, you know, they're hackers, they're rebels, they're, they're thinkers, they're, they're empathetic, going for an empathy of helping other people design something that will help somebody do this. Uh, they become explorers, they're uh, divergent thinkers, and they understand diversity better, problem solvers. You know, see, Maker does all of these things, which is why we need it. Now, people are already doing some Maker in the classrooms. I'm sure if you were in a classroom or you're working there, you're probably already doing um, some Maker ideas. And so this is some results from a uh, time I gave a presentation to a school. You know, they're Play-Doh, they're painting with their hands, uh, doing crafts based on the time of year, uh, making a, set, a sled and slop. And I don't know what slop is. Uh, pinhole photography. I love that. Was, I had fun doing pinhole photography when we were in physics. Um, you know, all sorts of things you can make. And some of them are inexpensive. But maker centered learning and projects are not the same. Just because you make stuff doesn't necessarily mean you're doing maker centered learning. There is that difference. Again, the artifact is at the center. It gets to be individualized or personalized. And there are lots of conversations around it. Conversations are where you can weave in the content. Uh, and that content comes with context. Some people said like makerspace is math in action because they were a math teacher and they were trying to you know, help the kids get, understand the math. And they said, well, we go to the makerspace and we've got, and that's where we understand the math is by using the math. Um, so we have context for our content. And it's also nat naturally transcurricular. So just because you make doesn't mean you're doing maker-centered learning. So there's a lot to maker-centered learning. As we saw that uh, on the the, uh, the retro tool, all the questions people add, there's a lot to this. So people are like, well, how do I even do it? How do I start? How do how, I can't do all that? I've got so much stuff to already cover, so much content. How do I find the time, the resources? The hot? Well, you start with one. 
you know, Chinese proverb, you know, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a, with a single step. Um, you put one foot in front of the other. You start with one step. You pick one topic. You pick one learning experience and you design it as a maker centered one. Maybe it's a topic that needs some help that you don't really love, that you want to redo it a different way. Maybe it's a topic that's already awesome. You just want to try something different with it. Start with one. That's the important part um, to get going. And you might have to, you, you start with cardboard. You start with just designing maybe. And it could be digital design. Like if you're, if you're talking about 3D designs, you don't have to 3D print your designs that you make in Tinkercad. You can just design them. Um, now here's the, here's the tough part. Anything that you knew that you try will probably feel like it failed because it's different than what you were doing before because anything new is hard. So you got to judge it and evaluate it differently. You know, ask the kids, how did it go? Did you like doing this? Did you not like doing this? What could we do better? They, it's their learning, you know, it's learner centered. It's make it make it. So Maybe you maybe you want to take one project, one uh, topic and just give them the reins. Hey, kids, what can we do here? What can we make? What conversations can we have? Um, but you start start with one if you got you need to. So I have some ideas from uh, classroom. So mathematics. Um, Kids have to learn measurement in some sort of time. We know they can't read a tape measure. I got seniors in high school that could not read a tape measure, didn't understand it at all. So I think they should have to start by designing and making their own measuring devices. Start with just small rulers. They don't understand what the lines are for. Well, if they have to make them, they now have to understand them. And you can make them you know, in Tinkercad, in Inkscape, in Google Draw, in Google Slides all sorts of ways that you could make things like that. You can just print them on paper. If you got a vinyl cutter, you cut them on vinyl. If you got a 3D printer, you can 3D print them. If you have a laser cutter, you can laser cut them. I mean, you don't get stuck by not having tools because they can still design stuff, but you can always just print things out. But if they have to design their own measuring devices, they're going to understand measuring better and then have them use them to make something. You know, um, size of things, relative size of things. You know, what's what's 50% bigger? What's 100% bigger? Well, they got to make models that can do that. And you can just design the models in Tinkercad and they could work on, you know, making something 50, you know, 100% bigger, 150% bigger too. What's twice the size? What's three times the size? You know, and then you can get at, you know, why is that volume so much more when all I did was double the side? Well, because it's cubed. Um, you know, they got to get their hands on them. They got to see them from all angles. They got to make stuff, make models. That's why we always say, you know, starting with cardboard, even paper. I remember when we first did things to uh, make, make a box that can hold water, this a certain amount of water. We made it in paper first. And then we put water in and kids realized, okay, yeah, water doesn't stay in paper, but it, it got our point across. Um, design stuff, shapes and geometry. They got to make them out of all sorts of materials, any materials you got, um, you know, design them. You can use different things to design them perfectly like GeoGebra or Desmos, um, or you, you make them. Like we did uh, geodesic domes a couple of different times, a couple of different ways. On the left is the one way we did it with uh, coffee stirs and pipe cleaners. And important thing about that, they will use a whole 12 inch pipe cleaner to connect two five inch straws. So you need to tell them to cut them into one, you know, like an inch and a half long, the, the pipe cleaners to make connections just at the ends. But everyone you know, made their own geodesic dome. We talked about shapes. We talked about geodesic domes and energy efficiency and all things like that. So there were some sidebars. Um, we got to deal with triangles and why triangles are such good support. Another time in geometry class, we I bought a bunch of PVC and we built them out of PVC. I gave them 10 foot long PVC pipes. We broke the, we broke the class in half and they each half had to build a dome, but they also had to market it, um, draw the designs for it. So they had to take pictures, make a video, make a commercial, make a flyer um, and build. 
and I gave them 10 foot PVC and PVC cutters and said, here's, here's the parts you need to get and here's how you put them together. And they did it and they loved it. Um, they broke themselves up into groups of like who wanted to do what, like, hey, I want to do the, the, the flyer design. So a couple people did that. And, but they all, but the great thing was they also kind of switched groups a little bit, like the ones that were doing the flyer design or the commercial um, also went over and built a little bit. So it was nice that they didn't have to be responsible for all the building. They could just do a little bit and see what it was like. Um, so they could market it as like a, a storage shed, a greenhouse, um, a playground piece of equipment. So they had, so it was all kind of combined. There was one group who cut the PVC pipes the wrong length. Uh, they had trouble measuring. Imagine that. So I had to go buy more PVC. Uh, physics, if you're doing Newton's laws, build mousetrap cars, build hovercrafts. Um, and while they're building, we can talk about stuff. But while they're using it, especially like the hovercraft, they always ran into the wall and they couldn't figure out why they ran into the wall. Well, it was a 100 foot gym. And um, uh, we were not starting at the end of the gym. So I gave them a hundred foot extension cord, which would run them into the wall until they figured out that they needed some friction to stop. Um, so we could have all these conversations and they could have fun, which was always great. Um, mousetrap car, I had one time a kid couldn't get the mousetrap car to go straight. And it's like, okay, what's going on? They try and fix it. And we talk about things because they had to go a certain distance. So we then just, fell back to well circumference does, does it go how far we wanted to go in a circle and they measured that and said yes it does so we would turn failure into success um because we, we could still have all the conversations it didn't look like everybody else's success but it was success because we got what we needed and they felt successful you know, if, is there anything with boats that you got to deal with? Are you reading a story that, that's that got boats in it? Are you, are you talking about, you know, the first tra uh, transatlantic um, voyage? Are you talking about ancient voyagers? Build boats of any kind, paper boats, cardboard boats, 3D design them. Um, you know, if you want it, there's history, there's physics, there's math. It's just a great thing for you to have the conversation. But again, building that artifact opens up multiple sides of the both sides of the brain, multiple parts, and allows you to have different conversations. And they can have them from their point of view. You know, if you got to do buoyancy, you know, build boats, build them out of cardboard, put duct tape. You know, does cardboard float? I love that some schools have pools available to them, and they do people sized boats that they have to build a boat that can get them and a partner across the pool um i love that, that that and the kids have so much fun doing that i i hear i've never been able to do it but i see and talk to people um i've made boats that fit in the palm of your hand because we're working 3d printer and we get you know it takes a long time to 3d print stuff um so that worked great because everyone designed something different but we had the conversations we needed to have that was important and they all got to take them home. Well, the ones that wanted to. You know, in biology class, at some point in time, you've got to talk about biomes. So kids have to design uh, their own biome. We did this where they had to pick 10 animals and 10 plants uh, to put in their biome and tell me what they picked and why they picked it and show me their biome. And one kid wanted to paint. So they brought in a, a little easel and painted their biome and talked to me while they painted it. Uh, several kids love drawing, so they drew their biome. Now, those cactus look awesome. Those mountains look great. Um, the camel doesn't quite look too great, but that's fine. You know, this is, they all, we had the conversations we needed to have while they designed and created, and we did more than just, you know, that, but drawing takes some time to get that detail in there. You know, there are kids that wanted to make the, the classic diorama, the uh, diorama, the model. Great. And they were bringing stuff in and I had stuff. And, um, and we talked, we got discussions about all the animals and plants they had. I had, a, I have a cricket and I brought my cricket in and I said, Hey, if you want to make a sticker of one of your favorite animals, we can do that. So they can put it on the, on your uh, computer, on your phone, take it home, whatever, put it in your locker. Um, so a bunch of kids uh, did that. And we could have conversations about their animal and their biome. 
and all the skills they had to learn about, you know, finding the right type of image, uh, downloading it, importing it into the Cricut software, making sure it worked, getting it to the Cricut, loading the Cricut, weeding the vine, all that stuff, all, all little skills that they got to practice now. Um, this is just all the negatives of of some of the ones we did. And yes, you'll see some others. There's like a, there's like a couple of Disney princesses there. There's a band there, but that's kids who had already done everything they needed to do. They wanted to do something else with the cricket. And I was like, that's the idea. They learned something. Now they wanted to use it for some for themselves. Um, in biology, you got to do uh, traits, uh, recessive genes, non-recessive genes. Well, designing monsters, designing uh, fairy tale animals. That, that, those are great ways to do this because then they have to make them and then we can you know, they, so they can do it on a uh, paper they can do it on a computer they can do it in tinkercad if they want to they had to pick like six i think we had to pick six traits that would have a recessive and a non non-recessive gene um design the parents then breed the parents and the the, the kids would have to have the offspring would have to have you know based on non-recessive non and dominant uh genes so they could die in different ways. And an extension of this, I could see us then make, doing like you making felt, um, felt characters or making uh, like stuffed animal kind of plushies out of this and then donating the stuffed, the stuffed animals to um, like a children's home or a children's hospital. Um, but we, it's all, while we're making, while they're designing, we're having the conversations. You know, in science, you got to talk about earthquakes. Uh, you got to make buildings and shake them. So you make them out of different stuff. This is spaghetti and um, marshmallows and tape. You got coffee stirs, um, lots of things you do. History, how many board games are there in the world? And how many of them are actually about historical times or historical subjects? I think making board games is a great way to do this because they've got to design their ideas. They got to design the board. They got to design the pieces. They got to make up the rules. They got to, you know, get in the content that you want them to get in. Uh, my neighbor teacher in the classroom next to me a few, several years ago, they, he did this biology with board games. But I think history is another great way to do it. Um, okay. All right. Roman history, um, make stuff, make, make the city of Rome, make the aqueducts, make the Colosseum, make different parts, make trebuchets, talk about science, talk about um, the math, the history, the wars. Um, yeah, if you've got a war to discuss, World War I, World War II, whatever, um, make the parts of the war, make the machines of the war to, have those, to be able to have those discussions. If you're making catapults, you can make them with, pop, with popsicle sticks and rubber bands. You don't have to make uh, six foot tall uh, trebuchets. Um, we did this at home a couple of times. It was a home project. It didn't work as well, partly because the, the fathers did most of the work, um, partly because they were they were they had trouble getting together. But I finally figured out the real reason it didn't work as, as well. We weren't together having the conversations. When we did it in class, I brought it to in class. And I, I bought two by fours and everyone had to make it out of these two by fours and it had to be no more than uh, four foot tall, boom, boom, boom. Now we were together while they were building, we could have the conversations we needed to have. That, again, that conversation piece is the vital aspect of maker-centered learning. Um, it is kind of a pain to have a dozen 16 trebuchets in your classroom, even though they were kind of small, they still take up lots of space. We have about English. five minutes left there, Paul. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, English, imagery. You know, you're reading a book. How do you know the kids learn stuff from the book? Well, have them pick the images, the visuals that, and explain why those images, why those visuals were important. This is a project in Kim Stanley's class. Um, they read this a book, Just Mercy, and the one kid made a, his project was shining the light on social injustice. And so he put all these images on a lampshade. Um, I think it kind of looks like he made the lampshade too, but it, it's about imagery. So that's why I also like this idea of making um, candle boxes the, the, down in the bottom right, this idea of tea, using tea lights or just LEDs to kind of light up. Um, you design a box, you put imagery on the side, or if you make them round, what imagery was important for what we're doing? Have them explain it visuals. We're very visual people. 
Um, I have uh, David Thoreau takes his kids out with their cameras, with their phones, and they take pictures of words. And then they come back and they crop the pictures to make poems. Sometimes they're no longer just writing, you know, black on white poetry. They're, they're, they're building the poems so that get, gets them more time to have discussions and conversations. Um, Dan Ryder reads of Mice and Men, and he wanted something different with it. Um, so he asked them, and they finally, his driving question was, what do the men in the story need? And the students came up with, well, they need a place to call their own. So every kid had to, well, or partners, had to design a tiny home that met the needs of the men in the story. So they, they showed their understanding of the story by incorporating pieces into the tiny homes. Now I know of a couple of schools that actually build tiny homes and sell them which I think is an awesome thing to do. Um, coding, robotics, someone mentioned they do coding, robotics. I, you can get it in history and math. Um, you got all the patterns like Tinkercad has that code blocks where you can code uh, 3D designs. I think history kids could uh, code like on the bottom right there are uh, things they'd find in a, in a dig for an archeologist. You know, what are the patterns for the culture I think you can design that. Um, in English, I know of several teachers who um, they bring an upper grade down to a lower grade and the upper grade helps the kids animate a scene from the story that the lower grade kids are reading. So they're using coding robotics. The upper kids know the coding robotics, the lower kids know the, the story. Um, so you're animating a story. Fashion, kids love wearing stuff that they make. So we can do uh, some, there was going to be, a, there, was a, there was a turtle stitch um, session here also. You know, if you got the embroidery machine doing turtle stitch, but you can also 3D print uh, jewelry. You can laser cut jewelry. You can vinyl cut things. Does have kids design their own stuff? Um, it's jumping on me. I think every place should have gardens, indoor, outdoor. Um, and all the conversations you can have about growing food. Um, you got the science, you got the history, you know, what, what are the native plants to this area? What have we brought in? What foods are in this culture? What, uh, you know, if we're studying another country, what foods are na nat native there? What are part of the culture? Um, all while growing your own stuff. John Umikubo does these awesome little layered design ideas. And I can see this in anything any any project and you can do it in cardboard you can do it in wood you don't have to have a laser cutter he happens to have one um you can do just with with paper or cardstock and you're building up a layer design for uh, a scene in a book or a scene from history and they have to explain it um he's just doing landscape kind of um scenes um, but they also add leds so you can throw in circuits there so there 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 are tons of ways to get um maker in but you also got to because it, the focus has to be on the conversations that you can have so again the question is what can i have the kids design and create that will allow me to have the content conversations that i want to have and it can be kind of sideways it does not be exactly direct we're studying boats so we're going to build a boat okay but how often are you really studying boats um that's the conversations are the real important part um, I'm sure some of you have already done some, some things. I have a lot more here about some school-wide examples. I then have uh, resources um, at the end of the slideshow. Also books and lists and things, but I know they wanted us to leave time for questions. Um, yeah, Sherry, you got to, teachers have to give up control and take the role of lead learner is the one way to say it. Uh, yeah, we That's don't. a nice to, way to say it, actually. I like that a lot. You know, we, 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 we're going to go together. It works so much better if you learn together. You can never, with Maker, you can never know everything because um, there's so many modalities to it. And so many tools and so many materials and 
you know, like, you know, one girl was, was making um, a, a friendship bracelet with a certain kind of uh, string. I was like, well, is it any kind of string? She said, no, it's a certain kind of string. It's this thick, it's this, it's you got it. Awesome. Let's tell me about it. Now, you, you, if you talk jewelry making, you know, that's a great culture thing to do if you're doing other languages or other, learn about other countries. What's the, what's the, what's the jewelry that would be there and have kids design and make that even back through history like in the united states um jewelry has changed through our history so i'm sure it's happened in other countries too so when you're talking about historical times you could talk about the jewelries um i want to work with other people that's the thing she that she put up that i work with cogville school district and i actually don't i don't work with anybody right now I am a free agent trying to figure out a way to get more of this maker into schools and classrooms. And I have not figured out the best way to do that yet and earn a living. And but that's what I want to do is, you know, do that collaboration with teachers You're to help them the crowd. <laughs> I just don't know how to yet. I, I think I know how, but I need lots of money. Like, get create a mobile maker space and take it to them and work with them actually mobile spaces are very good for exactly what you're talking about i think it is it's I've just seen, i've seen it work in a few places uh very well yeah um chattanooga is doing some awesome things with digital fab labs if anybody wants another plate wants to check up on places that are doing things uh chattanooga school district um, they're, they've put in like 36 fab labs, um, in the school district and they've done some good training with the teachers. They don't do mobile, uh, cause they just decided to go into the school and, and build them. Um, yeah, more coming too. Yeah. Around here, I think I need to do mobile, but I don't have the $250,000 to start it. That's my guess at how much I would need to start it. Any uh, other questions while we're there? Do you, let me th throw up my content, my, yeah, my contact information. I love talking by email or Twitter about maker ideas, project ideas, sharing things. You know, like right now I've got to come, um, I want to do a, uh, binary bracelets at a rec center and also uh, geodesic domes at a rec center. So I gotta, I've never done binary bracelets. So I gotta look, research that and play in that and buy for that. So if anybody does binary bracelets, send me some information. We have about 10 seconds left. I just wanted to thank you so much for your presentation, Paul. Thank you.